Recording in progress. Okay. So, hello. I'm Hi. here with Alicia Steinberger, my friend from university. I don't know if I'm pointing in the right place, but I hope I am. <laughs> okay. Um, should we do some introductions? Do you want to go first? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for the intro, Emily. I am Alicia and I work in 3D animation, currently in games and in VFX movies and series before. Uh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> awesome. And um, I'm Emily. I am a 2D animator and I have worked on uh, Last Kids on Earth and Dogs in Space, which are both on Netflix right now. And uh, I have been at this job since 2019, which is almost three years now. We went to art school slash Emily Carr together and we studied animation. Um, Alicia, you studied 2D at first. Yeah, yeah. So actually we went to school before they split 2D and 3D departments. So ours was kind of just animation under like animation umbrella. I did focus more on 2D at first and at the end of third year. I kind of moved more into 3D animation. I tried taking a 3D course in second year, I think. And then I, I was like, this is, I can't do this. So I just stayed with 2D. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, that 3D class was intense. Yeah. Like, oh, my animation God. in 3D is not that intense. Okay. So we get started with the first question. Yeah. Okay. Um, what made you want to get into animation in the first place? Yeah. So for me, it was kind of, I, I loved art after watching Disney and, um, and Ghibli movies. So I loved, especially when characters inside the movies did art. Like for example, Kiki's delivery service, the oh, yeah. girl who paints and draws. I was like, oh my gosh, I need to do that. Even though, you know, the, the characters themselves are also drawn. <laughs> I just kind of bonded more with their drawings inside the drawing world. <laughs> and then Jane from Tarzan, she also draws. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need to do art. And it wasn't until I started watching Shinkai movies. So they're kind of more like anime feature films. When I uh, watched those and I, when, I, when I looked into Makoto Shinkai himself and I found out he went to university to study animation and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to do this too. This was like my calling. <laughs> it's your destiny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> How about yourself? Um, I always, I think I throughout high school I always knew I was going to study art. And the thing about um, the school we went to, um, Emily Carr, is that the first year you get to explore different options of what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So um, I was interested in like telling stories. So I was like, I could do illustration or I could do animation. But because I already tried drawing a comic in high school, which was not very good. So uh, I was like, I already tried that. So let's try something new. Like the whole point of going to school is that I could learn a new skill. So I chose animation. Yeah. Yeah. No, I bet your comic was awesome though. <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe I'll unearth it one day and show everyone. Okay. Uh, next question. What was your first job in the industry? My first job was actually junior layout artist at Scanline VFX. So that was before I became an actual animator. I was a junior harmony animator. I am now a lead animator, which <laughs> basically oh. means I have slightly more responsibility of checking on my team and stuff. <laughs> That's yeah. super sick. Did you did you uh, go all the way from junior? Like, did you step every way, or did you kind of like jump a bunch? Yeah, I have I have no idea what the difference between like a junior and senior animator is. Mm. I feel like I've been like a junior this whole time. Maybe at then, some point it changed and I just never noticed. Right, right. Like on your contract it changed? Maybe? Yeah, probably, it probably like changed it to just like normal 2D animator and I just like mm. never really noticed it. But yeah, right, right. one day they were just like, hey, we're considering people for lead animator. Would That's you, sick. Would you consider it? And I was like, yes. <laughs> That's awesome. No, and you're super skilled. So I think it's perfect for you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you still at Scanline, by the way? Uh, no, actually, I'm at Meta. It, like what used to be Facebook. And we're oh. doing like 3D or like VR games for the metaverse, which metaverse. is pretty exciting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, what is your favorite part of the job? Oh yeah, for me, it's definitely seeing the end result, seeing everything come together, everyone's hard work kind of like merging and creating something awesome. And second to that is coming up with like cool ideas to present to people. But I think the best part is still seeing your, your final product and that you can release to the world, that kind of thing. 
Cool. Yeah, my answer is kind of similar to yours. I like watching a shot just like be completed. Yeah. And I like, I like um, they'll upload versions of the episodes we're working on. Like it'll be like the animatic and then it'll be the posing version and then it'll be animated and then it'll be effects and it'll become, oh, yeah. and then it'll be like the last one, last few ones are like sound effects and music and then like ties everything together so well. And I like watching all of them and being like, whoa, it gets better each time. <laughs> totally, yeah, yeah, I love those breakdowns so much too. I like going on the website, our company website and stalking other people's shots because <laughs> sometimes I'll see a really good one. Like, oh my God, how did they do that? <laughs> it's just like observe their process. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I think that's a great way to learn too. To just like break down and see what other people do and you can see what you can take from their workflow yeah, and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's good to steal other people's skills. <laughs> it's called heavily inspired. Yeah, not yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, next question. What is your least favorite part of the job? Oh yeah. Um this one is definitely um like the the time it takes to make animation. It, it takes so long and I feel like a lot of people don't realize how long it takes and I think the grind like after you get your idea you're super excited and hyped about it and then when you start doing it and you're kind of like when am I going to ever finish this that's like the, the worst part where you're kind of like second guessing yourself and second guessing your skills like can I even are my skills even good enough for this like Aww. and then right before you're on the last sprint to like finish it off when you're like yes this is gonna look awesome like right before then that's kind of the worst part I feel. <laughs> yeah i don't like scenes that are super long and scenes that have a lot of characters right okay yeah yeah a lot of so. characters makes a scene super laggy and mm -hmm. long scenes i don't know i feel like you just have to put more work into long scenes i would rather them be like chopped up into little bits I don't know why, oh, yeah. that's just what I prefer, but I know other people felt differently. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, no, I, I, I feel you with the many characters thing. That really, I, I get it. It's so like you, you finished animating one character, you're like, okay, I'm done. And then you looked over it and then there's like more. Yeah, exactly. And then like some sometimes you, you do it and it's a back, background character and you don't realize it's gonna be covered by something else. You're like, oh, I spent all this time uh, on yeah. this. It's like I spend time like planting their feet, make sure they're not yeah. like slipping. And then it's like, oh, they're so far away. That doesn't exactly. <laughs> Next question. What is your favorite thing to animate? Oh, I like this one. For me, it's definitely animals and creatures, anything that is not necessarily human <laughs> that I really, really love. I feel like just because humans are like, we see people so often that we have a very high expectation of how people should look like when they're in movies and animation. Um, and so there's a little bit more freedom when it comes to animals. They don't care that much how they move and how they look. So yeah. I like that a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was watching, um, do you know Corridor Crew on YouTube? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was watching one of their recent videos and they're talking about how like Gollum from Lord of the Rings and Thanos from like yeah. Avengers, like the reason they work so well is because they're not strictly human. Like they mm -hmm. can get away with like, if things don't look too realistic, it's fine because they're not human. Totally, so, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I totally agree with that. Yeah, and for me, um, I like doing like acting stuff rather than mm. action. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't, totally. um, like shots where like characters are just like walking or like running around. I'm not too into that. I like mm. stuff that's like body language and like expression. Yeah, 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 that's awesome. Yeah, it seems more fun to me. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, I'd like to know what your day as an animator looks like. <laughs> I, like I, I just wrote coffee. <laughs> 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 I mean, I feel like that's kind of half of it. You kind of get the coffee high and you're just like, oh, okay, let's go. <laughs> and you kind of forget what's happening. Wow. Um, I'm just kidding though, but for real, um, so at work, um, usually we have uh, meetings like dailies, not necessarily every single day, but at least twice a week just to check in. So usually we get tasks hand, uh, like, um, uh, distributed to us and uh, we do the tasks, upload them, um, the supervisor or lead will review them and give notes and we'll get them back do the notes and re-upload them with the same process. And then um, during the meetings, we'll always catch up to see if we're all still on the same page, that everyone's going in the same direction, reaching for the same goal kind of thing. That's pretty much like 
the daily routine, kind of just uploading shots, um, getting notes, addressing the notes, uploading <laughs> shots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my answer is pretty much the same too. Um, it's not so much daily, it's just like weekly, like with mm. every new project you get, you get like, so for me, um, you get your shots assigned and then you get a, like a meeting where you break down the episode and like what they want specifically from each shot. Mm -hmm. And then um, we pose our animation and then we animate our animation and then we upload that. And then if there are any notes, we have to do revisions, but sometimes we don't because we have a retakes team and sometimes revisions go through them instead. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, that's so cool. Has, <laughs> your, has your role changed since becoming a lead? Like, is there any major difference um, from when you were just an animator versus now when you're a lead? Um, I still do like the same animation stuff, but I also mm -hmm. have to do uh, monthly slash bi-weekly checkups on the team. And I also have to do some walk cycles and, and check. Oh, I do walk cycles and then I have to check new builds to make sure they're good for animating. Oh, okay, so wild. Like some extra responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. So are the walk cycles kind of part of checking the, the rigs? Um, or, they or, I mean, have to checking. They're, yeah, okay. um, um, if the next episode that we're working on requires a character to be walking around or running a lot, they'll mm -hmm. ask me to create a cycle for them so that the animators can just use it instead of spending their time making yeah, their yeah, yeah. cycle. That's fair. Oh, did, when you do 3D, you also do posing and then animation, right? Exactly, yes. There's a little bit of a difference depending on what you're working on. Um, you don't always do posing. If, for example, you have a motion capture shot. So motion capture means someone was in a suit um, with like trackers and stuff and they moved and then they recorded that and then you get that into the computer. The workflow for that is a little bit different because you just kind of clean it up, make sure it looks natural and that it's, you know, not janky or anything and that it matches the uh the anatomy of the cg character you have and then if you start with a purely cg shot then you would go through the same process with uh, blocking and then uh breaking down in betweens stuff like that and <laughs> adding overlap and this and that and then there's also other times where you get uh so in vfx for example that means like feature films like marvel films they'll shoot the live actors and if they want to replace them with um, CG, like for example, if they're punching someone, but they're not actually hitting them, but they want it to look like they're hitting them, they'll do something that's called roto anim. So there's a different department that then copies frame by frame exactly what the actor is doing. Then they give that to the animators, and then we kind of just exaggerate it and make it look like they're actually punching them, for example. So there's a few different workflows depending on what show you're on or what you got from a different department. Have you worked on any Marvel films? Yeah, yeah. So I've worked on um, like Free Guy, um, Black Widow, um, Eternals. <laughs> I, I think that's it. I have to look into my IMDb. <laughs> Can you tell us what shots you did? <laughs> Can you yeah, actually I could. Oh my god, it's so exciting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know if you want me to do that right now, but... Oh, you can send me them later and I'll like... Open yeah, okay, video. sweet. <laughs> that would be cool. Maybe I'll uh, just quickly... You can cut this part out. I'm just gonna... Okay. <laughs> real quick if I... No, I'm gonna leave this in. No, <laughs> and then there was Godzilla versus Kong as well. But that one I did layout for. I didn't actually do... I didn't actually do animation on that one. Oh, do you want to explain the difference between layout and animation? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, so... Um, in layout, it's more, um, it's a super important department, I think, because I've worked in situations where I didn't have a layout team, and that was really tough. So basically, like layout, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. It's in, like, encloses so many different, like, skills. So it's kind of pre mixed with animation. So they do a lot of camera work, making sure that the camera is correct and in the right place in um, relation to the, the plate and the set and the 3D like objects and stuff. They'll place in the characters, make sure they're kind of moving in approximately the right way. And um, then they'll publish that scene and then give it to the animators and the animators won't touch the camera. They'll just focus on the character. So it's kind of taking a lot of responsibility off the animator's hands mm -hmm. and just making sure like getting it all ready for them and also making sure that everything kind of makes sense in physics world. So they need to make sure that all the cameras are moving kind of physically 
like logically, I guess, and not too fast and making sure that it all matches with the set and like, making like, it kind of just helps all the departments, like for example, modeling as well. It, they, we give, when I was on layout, we gave them a lot of feedback on if we need to extend the, sh the scene, like the set size, for example, if the camera goes out of the set, for some reason they need to extend it on one end, stuff like that, if that makes sense. I think it does, yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and imagine it like, um, imagine it like pre -vis, so where you, uh, it's kind of like animatic for 2D and mixed with a little bit of animation as well. <laughs> and yeah. finally the camera. <laughs> yeah, because um, when I like had to tell people that, oh, my friends work in layout, they're like, what is that? And I'm like, yeah, I don't yeah. want to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a bit hard to explain. Okay, next question. Are there any warm ups you do to get ready for work? I've heard it can be hard on the wrists. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. Um, usually, like, I have a bad habit of not doing any. And then after any pains, start creeping up after like then I start doing mm -hmm. exercises and stuff which isn't necessarily great so I usually just like shake out my wrists and uh, like stretch them a bit like this and like this and like shake them out and I also have a standing desk which is really awesome for back pains to avoid back and butt pains <laughs> back and uh, butt. <laughs> yeah. the animator struggle exactly <laughs> yeah that's kind of all I really do I don't really do any warm-ups or cool-downs either, but I do also have a standing desk. Yay! Of the back and butt pain. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have to say the back and butt pains are pretty bad if they, you know, if they get to that stage. Yeah, it's like my Ooh. chair, um, it's like, like it's cushioned, but if you sit in it for too long, the cushion starts flattening and then you're basically oh. sitting on the hard bottom. Oh like, no! I can't do this anymore. I need to get like a standing desk or something. <laughs> Totally. Yeah, everything in the cushion kind of moves apart from your yeah. <laughs> oh, I just, You can anyway. cut that out. Oh. No, I, I'm keeping that in. Oh, I'll make it less weird. Uh. <laughs> um, what are some daily struggles? Oh my gosh, so many. <laughs> so many struggles. Yeah, totally. No, I think like the biggest struggle for me personally is just waking up in the morning. I I total night owl, so getting up early in the mornings is is always a bit hard. Um, but also like planning out how long you want to take for a certain task or a shot. A lot of times, um, if for example, a uh, lead or a supervisor asks me how long do you think you can, or how long will it take for you to finish this thing? It's hard for me to like estimate the amount of time I'll spend on it. I usually, I usually think I can get it done before I do. So I set my time a little bit later, but then I still kind of almost miss it. So that's kind of my hardest thing. Yeah, waking up in the morning, I didn't even think about that. When when we were still like going to the office before like quarantine and all that, mm -hmm. um, I would have to get up at a certain time if I want to make the bus Oh my and, gosh. Uh, so I would wake stressful. up like normally. But now that we're working from home and my off my office is like right beside my bed, I feel yeah. like 8 30. I'm like, I can still stay in bed. Work starts at nine. I can just get up and go to work. Like it's not a big deal. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. What did I write down? Oh, deciding on which shot to work on every day. I have to look at oh. my shot list and be like, which shot do I want to do today? Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. I always do all the easy ones first so I can get them out of the way. But that means that all the ones that are left are the ones that I don't want to do. So oh, no. the last one is just me suffering. Like, <laughs> oh, that's the worst. <laughs> I have to say that I have the same exact mentality. I always do the easy things first because I'm just like in my brain, I'm just kind of hoping that eventually I'll get into the groove and I'll want to do it, yeah. which never happens. <laughs> it's like I don't feel like doing this now but maybe I'll feel like it later yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. I still don't want to do it actually one thing that I have developed that has helped me with my kind of struggle with finding what to do is making like I, I mean I'm sure everyone has come up with this idea but doing like a bullet point list so just breaking down very simple things like I'm gonna do this walk cycle um for this character just breaking it down super simple like I'm gonna work on the hips first and then the chest and then the head and like those kind of the breaking down the list thing really helps me 
minimize the damage. So like in my brain, I'm like, oh my God, I have so many things to do. But when I look at the list, I'm like, oh, you know what? This is all doable. Like just one thing at a time. And then you kind of get through it. I feel like it really works for me. Yeah. In case anyone has the same issue. <laughs> Lists are super helpful. Okay, next one. What is the most stressful part? Um, so for me, I think, I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining, but it is very stressful when clients change their mind a lot on something that like, you know, it, it takes a lot of time to change it in animation and in like movie making. Uh, so it's a bit, uh, you know, also when you've worked on something for a long time and then the client changes their mind and that kind of idea gets scrapped a lot of your work kind of goes out the window too. And you kind of just like, oh, I could have spent that time, you know, like playing with the cats or I'm just kidding. I mean, it's it's not, it's it doesn't feel like personal at all. It's just kind of more like, oh, you know, they changed their mind. We just have to keep doing this again. <laughs> I just wish that, uh, I feel like it's more of a thing in VFX, like in live action movies where they don't have a storyboard, they don't have an animatic and they don't stick to anything because, um, you know, they want to make the best thing, so they want to keep iterating, which is a bit painful <laughs> for the animation side, because that's kind of not how we want to do it. We want to have yeah. like a perfect plan and just work on that, which is uh, much better, I think. Um, yeah. But what can you do? <laughs> yeah, I think it's not even the VFX house. Like, it's not their choice. It's kind of more like the client. They yeah, just think the like it's so easy to change. They're like, oh, let's just send this back to the VFX artist. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they can change, they can do everything. And then <laughs> we're like, oh. And like, we're like suffering. You're like, please, we don't want to do this stuff anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> For me, the most stressful part is starting a new episode because you get assigned a new shot and they're mm -hmm. all like blank. And you're like, right. there's so many shots I have to do and none of them haven't started yet. And, oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> Next question. What does career progression look like? Oh yeah, so this one, I think, I don't know if it's similar or not to 2D, but in 3D, it's kind of, you start as a junior, you go to mid, then senior, which like similar to you, I guess, there isn't really a big difference between junior, mid and senior, just that seniors, you expect to have more knowledge and juniors is more like they're on the learning phase. Mm -hmm. And then you, you could potentially become a lead like yourself. And then there's also supervisor. And then, so supervisor would be more like for your team on your show, uh, making sure that everything is going according to plan with the client and the team. And then there is also uh, VFX soup. So that's above supervisor kind of, um, it's not department, like for one department. So soup would be like anim, anim soup. And VFX soup is kind of the whole, across all the, uh, departments kind of so um you'd have like modeling texturing everything is combined under the vfx soup after that they have the client but the client is not within your house so you can't really <laughs> become the client the client is like sitting <laughs> in la somewhere <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly exactly so that's pretty much the career progression Sounds and i think like in talking about soup a lot liquid soup Oh yeah, I'm like <laughs> supervisor. I mean, not the soup, not your half can of soup that you ate in the fourth year or second year. Yeah, I think in games actually VFX soup because it's not VFX house. They might be called the manager. Oh okay. Yeah, but supervisor. My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's just I, I, we call it soup too. But now that I'm listening to it, I'm like sounds like <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> totally. <laughs> if they make um, a restaurant. That, that they have a huge soup menu. <laughs> yeah, I was like, do you want um, anim soup or do you yeah. want soup? <laughs> For me, um, I'm not 100% sure, but it's um, junior, which mm -hmm. means you get like easier shots basically because you're, you're new, you're still learning. Mm -hmm. And then I suppose at some point you turn into like a not junior animator, like a normal animator. <laughs> and then yeah. after that, you could get tapped to be the lead animator which like I said, you're, um, you have some more responsibilities, mm -hmm. just a bit more. And then after that, I think you can get to supervisor who um, oversees the team and like gives notes on the shots and then has like a lot of meetings about like how this, the show is going, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I'm not totally sure what happens after that because I never asked about it, but I'm assuming 
at some point there's like animation director or art director or something yeah that's about all I know <laughs> um, no that's awesome when, when you get there let us know again <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I'll keep y'all updated yay um, <laughs> okay next question what is a fun fact that non-animators may not realize about your work I don't actually know. Do you want to go first on this one? Maybe I'll take inspiration from you. Oh, okay. But your point is really good because I agree yeah. with it. Um, okay, okay, cool. You said that animators don't make the whole movie, which <laughs> I think is something that a lot of people do think. They see like a shot and they're like, oh, you did all of that, right? And they're like, yeah. no, no, we just do, we just do the animation of like the characters and the props mm -hmm. and the background and the character design and like um, the effects, like special effects and comp comping that's all someone else we just do the animation exactly yeah <laughs> i think the reason why i thought of this is because when you watch a lot of movie breakdown or like 10 facts you know you wish you knew about this movie or something um they always say like they always say like oh the anime the animators did such a great job on this and i was like that's not the animators <laughs> responsibility you know they had nothing to do with this or like the animators did such a bad job it looks horrible it's like we don't have control over story like <laughs> I can't improve on the story I'm sorry so that's kind of how this <laughs> answer kind of evolved yeah <laughs> no yeah that makes sense um I was watching this movie that was like the animation wasn't that great because it was like a small indie movie and I was looking at reviews for it and people were like the animation looks fine but the story's not great I'm like the animation does not look fine what are you talking about and I think what they were talking about is like the rendering and the lighting looks good, mm -hmm. which to them must mean the animation is also good, but no, oh. they're not the same thing. They're different departments. <laughs> exactly. No, totally. I think there's so many departments within at like within the umbrella of animated movies and and shows that uh, people don't know specific ones. Animation is just the most like famous kind yeah. of department so everything. One that everyone wants to be. You're like, I want to be animator. And it's mm. like, but did you know that there's a bunch of other jobs yeah, you can also have. No, totally. And like, there's so many uh, skills that mm -hmm. can be utilized for all sorts of different departments within the animation industry. Yeah, like animators, just one of them. And yeah. I feel like if you have, like, if you have like an eye for color, for example, you could do background design or something. Or like color design. That's color okay. design. Yeah, yeah. Or like, yeah, exactly. For like the whole, like the show, the mood and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Which is like a lot of things that I don't actually do. Like I don't care about the lighting and because I don't do it. So, I, <laughs> so I'm really bad at lighting. Oh my god, explain to people what lighting people because Cheryl does lighting. You know, uh -huh. when I tell people like, oh my friend does lighting, they're like, I don't get it. Like, do the mm -hmm. animators not already have light? And there's like, do they not already yeah. have light? Like, no, actually, but like, they make the light look good. <laughs> like, no, I totally. It? Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I mean, exactly. So when when animators do animation we have like uh like maya has this like basic light um so if i for example i'll open a really quick shot just to explain yeah. okay. what it looks like when you're looking at like a normal shot so this is how it looks like when you're just in maya so it it has light and you can see reflection and a bit of shadow but the shadow isn't really representing where it is because this character is actually in the on the ground but it looks like it's floating when you look at the shadow. So the default lighting in Maya is not great. And to make this look like, you know, like Wally, -E, this is a whole different level of lighting that you need to put in. So you need to have lights that bounce off the character that show their silhouette, right? You want like rim light, for example, or you, you wanna make sure that the character in the background are can be differentiated and you can see how this has a different mood from this for example and that's a lot to do with the lighting the color of the light the direction of the light so you can see how uh, eva has this rim light around her that's all the lighters they all um put a bunch of lights like in all the best places to make the character shine and to make them look the best possible it's just something that i could never do that's all the lighters responsibility okay um next question what do you wish animated movies would include more often mm -hmm. this is a really good question that i don't have a good answer to um personally i really love atmospheric stuff so like a super awesome design of a like location or the world design or just being more immersed in the world, um, which I think 
Ghibli does such a great job of that. They bring you into a different world and they have these sequences where not much is happening for the story, but you really feel like you're in there. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times these, like in the, in the more newer age of animation, they do more like, because uh, it's a lot more about telling a lot of story really fast. So I feel like they cut out on the, the slow paced stuff, which I really enjoyed. But maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just slow. <laughs> and of, of course, add more animals and creatures. I love them. <laughs> yeah. For me, I wrote that there wasn't such like a strict divide between like animation for kids and an animation oh, for yeah. adults. I just oh, wish yeah, there was yeah. more movies that are just like, it's for everyone, you know? Mm -hmm. like, like you mentioned Ghibli and I agree, like Ghibli stuff, they're, they're not necessarily like, like even the kid friendly ones like Kiki, they're not like necessary for kids, but they definitely are kid friendly, but anyone totally. can watch it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But like yeah, here, totally. if, you try to, if you try to be like, this movie is like for everyone, they're not going to understand. They're going to be like, so like, is it for kids or is it for adults? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And also like, I think it's a, a stereotype. Can you say stereotype? <laughs> Animation is always for kids, which yeah. I kind of wish was not there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's just so much about like I think this isn't so much a problem in like Japan and places like that but in mm -hmm. the western world like America totally. especially it's like it's like cartoons are always down on animation yeah yeah like, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally that needs to change yeah we're gonna have a revolution here <laughs> <laughs> okay we're almost at the end um do you enjoy working in animation yeah absolutely mm -hmm. yeah totally. dream. It was my dream since I was in high school and I'm super happy it worked out. And yeah. I think animation, I'm super lucky that animation is one of those jobs in arts that you can have a steady like income from. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm super blessed. Yeah, that's <laughs> definitely one of the things I was thinking of when I was in uni, like thinking about mm -hmm. jobs. Like um, at least with animation, there's like, cause Vancouver has a really big animation industry right now. Yeah. Animation's more like, you know, you're just in one department doing one job and you have other people who are taking care of other things. So it's a lot easier yeah. for me personally. Easy to handle, yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can just worry about like one aspect. Right, you don't exactly. Have to worry about, but how do I add the lighting to the scene or how do mm -hmm. I make it look like cool and stuff? Yeah. Totally, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know some people might find that like constraining because they want more creative freedom. Like I definitely feel that sometimes I'm like, I don't want to tell someone else's story. I want to tell my own story. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, while I'm working on that front, like it's nice to have a job that like supports me. Totally, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That I do also like. Yeah, 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 exactly. Having a job that you like is the best, the best thing, I think, yeah. Okay, last question. This one's just kind of like a funny one. Do you prefer <laughs> Flash or Harmony? <laughs> Harmony! <laughs> I mean, I've actually, yeah, I've actually never used Flash, so I can't say that I actually had a comparison. I would just go for Harmony for sure. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I told you this, but um, the one time I had to use Flash was I was when I was applying for jobs, and I was, I can't remember which company it was. I think it was it might be Titmouse, uh -huh. and they they are like, oh, um, we could consider you, but first we must send you this test, and uh -huh. they sent me like a file with uh -huh. like. It's like a flash file with some like, assets and stuff in it. They're like, okay, please animate this and send it back, and we'll decide if you you can work fast enough for our <laughs> pace. And I was like, I've never used Flash before. <laughs> oh my goodness, and that's so stressful. Yeah, and, and like the first few days was just me like googling things, like how do I use Flash? Oh, like, um... like how do I use Flash? Please help me. And yeah, and I ended up. I ended up doing it in Harmony and then bringing that into Flash and then tracing it, which is like the worst workflow ever. But yeah, I didn't, I legit didn't know how to use anything in Flash, no matter how much I Googled it. I was like, how do I use the pencil tool? How do I use the pen tool? And none oh of it was goodness. working. <laughs> oh no, that's super stressful. Did you get it? No, I don't think so. Um, I think it I could It would be so awesome them. if you did. <laughs> oh God, yeah, but um, I think if I emailed them and be like, if I said like I never used Flash before, could I get like a few extra days? Mm -hmm. They might have been okay with it. They might have understood. Right. Me. I didn't That's want to feel like I wasn't making excuses because I was right. like still new and looking for jobs. I didn't want yeah, to yeah, yeah. just girls like trying to like get more time. <laughs> oh no, I I know what you feel like when when you just start. You kind of like, like I have to do you know my best. I can't yeah. look like I'm struggling or anything. <laughs> yeah. 
totally. Yeah, that's so super yeah, fun. Flash, Flash has, um, I'm never touching Flash again. Yeah. <laughs> it's on your bad list. So that's all of the questions. Yay, thanks yeah. so much, Emily. Thank you for being in this video. Aw, okay. thanks, Emily. Yeah. Thanks. And we also did a collab on Alicia's channel that you can check out, but it's in the description box. Yay. Or maybe up here. This is where the thing will be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Bye, everyone. Cool. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for watching.